This was uh, Alberta's energy grid up until 2020. Uh, you see a massive share going to coal, about two thirds back in 2005 ish. Uh, then a massively growing share to natural gas. We've got you know, a little bit of wind, a little bit of other solar goes into that space. Uh, but we're now here, 2022. We have no more coal on the grid. That actually deserves a round of applause. That's, to my mind, a really good thing. That, that's a remarkable transition way before what was scheduled, uh, decommissioning of all these gas plants or coal plants to combine cycle and, and simple cycle. Next slide. So, you know, part of this conversation needs to be, you know, what does the future look like in Alberta? Uh, remarkably, the Alberta electric system operator has been way off in their predictions. Uh, their, their, their clean growth case, as you see here, is the green line. Uh, the base case being the dark line. What you see is going on in Alberta is, is remarkable. It's uh, massive growth. It's hockey stick curve. Uh, so, I, you know, this is from Blake Schaefer in basically pointing out that our electric system operator is so far behind in the times in projecting. Next slide. What we all need to be fearful, and the segue from Amelie to, to my slide couldn't be better, honestly, because she, she really highlighted a, a couple of things. Um, you know, in terms of resiliency. I personally feel that the, the past does not predict the future very well. Albertans have become really reliant on a commodity, uh, natural gas, and I don't think the future looks remarkably at all the same as it, uh, it does. And so, you know, a, a war in Europe has changed things. Europe's in an energy crisis. We are connected now to LNG lines, the West Coast. We're now valuing our, our natural gas uh, at, uh, you know, world prices. I'm not an energy expert. I know a little bit. Uh, I, I would be fearful though, right? And so when we've got a, a growing share of our, you know, if you look back at that first graphic I showed you, where two thirds of our graph is now, or our energy mix is natural gas, that's concerning for, for anyone in this province that got accustomed to electricity at three or four or five cents a kilowatt hour, where we're now, you know, 16 or 17 cents. This is you know, year over year or in two years, we're talking about 100, 200, 300% uh, escalation rates. So this is, this is the reality. Uh, good news for, for people like us because we're competing against, you know, the pool price. Next slide, please. One of the other things that, uh, you know, everyone's pretty accustomed to by these days is uh, the carbon tax. But what you may not know is that we're heading to 2030, $170 a ton. So this is gonna impact the price of electricity. It's gonna impact the cost of natural gas. So starting to think about uh, what we're doing to our homes uh, and, and future proofing is, is really important. The other thing I wanted to comment on is I actually asked to be number three on the presentation. I believe strongly, uh, I come from a sustainability background, uh, more the, the deep and, and solar is great. I love solar person, I have a huge bias. We should be the last, right? And so I just wanna, you know, in, in Amelie's case as well, she put solar at the end. Do that ceiling, add the insulation, do the aero barrier, do the retrofits, bring, you know, bring in the LED, then look at solar, right? You know, it's so easy to, to jump right to solar. It's like the, you know, uh, lipstick on a pig, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, there's a, there's a place for solar, absolutely. Make sure you're doing that other stuff first. And we're happy to, to support you along the way. Next slide. So again, you know, Alberta's different. We're unique. We're not BC or Saskatchewan where you've got a regulated entity, SAS Power and BC Hydro, where the price is the price. It escalates at 5% or whatever that might be. We've got some huge swings in pricing. Uh, in this graphic, you're seeing it. You know, averaged out, it was about 7.5 cents. In 2020, it was 6.5 cents-ish. Uh, that does include your transmission and distribution charges. Go to the next slide, please then the last two years has been remarkable, right? So if you're in a regulated rate option or you're variable, you know this very well, lock yourself into a, a, a longer term plan because what we've seen, right? You know, we've gone to almost 10 cents. So about hundred percent escalation. And then almost, you know, to this year, we're about 15 cents. Last month, we're about 16 or 17 cents again. If you're, if you're paying these rates, you're feeling the pain. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of low income household, households are paying these remarkable rates of 
you know, 16, 17, 19 cents a kilowatt hour. So this is why, you know, retrofits uh, make sense and solar makes sense in my mind. Next slide, please. So what to look for from the ground up. So, you know, when you're potentially looking to build a project, when you're looking to retrofit, when you're looking to buy your own home. Next slide. So dispelling the myth, there probably shouldn't be a myth anymore, but if there is, there should be no question that Alberta is a solar uh, hotspot. Uh, Calgary, we're about, you know, in this case, 1,250 kilowatt hours per kilowatt. This is a really important uh, metric. So whenever you're comparing apples to apples, you need to understand this one. It's not necessarily six kilowatts to six kilowatts. Uh, you know, that, that's a, a pretty good metric as well. But in Calgary, Edmonton, Alberta, we're, we're, we're remarkable on the world stage. We're pretty close to, you know, equivalent to Los Angeles or somewhere like that. Uh, you know, we get a lot of our energy, obviously, between March and October. Uh, you know, winter isn't a, a big production time, but that's okay. We evaluate and assess based on the annual production. Next slide, please. So in terms of azimuth and orientation, ideal is due south, 180 degrees, uh, and about 45 to 50 degrees at this latitude. Most homes aren't a 12-12 or a 14-12, and that's just okay. Or if you've got an east-west orientation on your roof, that's also okay. So an east-west orientation, you're still gonna produce about as well as if you're in Vancouver or if you're in Berlin or Tokyo. So it's, you know, places like Berlin and Tokyo have the most installed solar per capita, you know, and really were the guys that helped us bring solar costs down. So this is ideal. You know, if you're building a new home, give us a nice south-facing roof uh, is, is, is the best. But if you're not, that's okay. You know, we'll make it work. Uh, yeah. So shading is, is a big deal. You know, in Calgary especially, we don't have a lot of mature trees, even in our inner cities. Edmonton more so, Vancouver obviously far more so. If you've got this type of a scenario, so this is North Glenmore Park, uh, a home I was asked to evaluate. Unfortunately, this is gonna be about a 60 or 70% shading, not great. You know, 20%, 25% we're probably okay with. Economics are, are gonna make sense. If you've got this, and I'm never gonna recommend that you take down a mature tree. If you decide to, you know, so be it. Uh, but we, we really want good solar access from 10 to 12. You know, the early morning, you're kind of up the, the production curve. At the end of the day, you're coming down the curve. It's really, if you look at the parabola, you know, it's that 10 to 12 is when you want the energy. Uh, so if you got east or west trees, that's okay. Um, and, you know, Curtis asked me to make mention of, you know, so obviously tree and shading is important for, for passive house and, you know, looking at other things. I'm really speaking from a solar perspective. You know, if you're going to plant trees, you know, plant the ornamentals perhaps uh, that are going to help you with your passive shading, but not on shading the array. Next, please. So we also like geometry. So like the, uh, you know, the gable end roof, because our modules come in one shape and size. Actually, they come in multiple sizes, the same shape though. They're all rectangular. They don't come in triangles. That's also not true. They come in triangles at a very costly uh, expense. <laughs> like three times, four times the cost. So give us, give us, the, give us the simple, you know, I'm a big fan of, of uh, standing seam metal as well, because it's a 50 year roof versus a, a shingle roof, which is, you know, 10 or 15 years, maybe two years, depending on the hail storms that are coming through. So, you know, something like that or, or, or rubber, because the cost to remove and replace is significant. So if, if, a, if a, you know, a hail system comes through, it's gonna be likely insurance, but if you've got a, an asphalt roof that hits its life in 15 or 20 years, a, a solar system's 30 years plus, you've got a plan to remove and replace that system. That's gonna erode your economics. I'd also argue from an, an aesthetic perspective, you know, that, that nice, simple, clean look of, uh, of the, uh, on the top left is nice. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. This is production home builders, uh, homes, same builder, not disclosing any names. In this case, uh, we were asked to model based on what you see here, the 12,100 kilowatt hours. Um, and so the location is Edmonton as well. So next slide, please. So that's what we're left with. And, and honestly, we're, we're always the last of the conversation. We'd love to be earlier in the conversation, but we're always the last. Uh, 
what we were given was this home, this orientation, so not too south. And what we ended up with was modules kind of scattered, so a little bit like uh, Amelie's, uh, where we're, we're putting modules in less than ideal locations, including north facing. And I'll tell you, five years ago, we never would have done this uh, because the price of solar was dramatically higher. Uh, 20 years ago, especially, we wouldn't have done this. In, for this project to get to net zero, and this, that's what the builder was asking of us, we had to put several modules, you know, almost half of the array on a north face. And so 13 and a half kilowatts DC, 13,500 watts. Next slide, please. So the result was we hit the net zero target with all that modules. Um, but the estimated kilowatt hours per kilowatt up there about 900. So again, we're getting closer to Vancouver or Tokyo. We don't love those cities for production. And the reason being all that north, right? It drags down everything else, it averaged out. Next slide. Second system, so higher than 12,100, right? It's 10% larger in terms of demand. Um, same location in Edmonton. Next slide, please. So this one, you know, I don't know that they actually planned on it, it's, but they gave us a nice shed roof, due south, and uh, a slope of 22.6, so that's 512, right? So in this case, for a higher demand, you know, we're trying to meet, we were able to achieve that with 11.88 kilowatts. So smaller system, one face, lower install cost, because every time we have to do a different orientation, we're having to reset up, so the cost comes down. Your, your system cost on something like this, relative to what we saw before, will be quite a bit lower, probably in the area of 10 to 15 percent, in addition to less modules, less overall cost. Next slide, please. So in this case, so we went from 899 to 1169. There's again that you know 20 percent ish increase, um, 13,900. So fewer modules, higher production. Next slide. Seems pretty obvious, but uh, again, when we're the last to the conversation, we're kind of dealing with what's left in place. So. Th this is kind of a, a bit of a segue into the next conversation, and it's, it's about selecting a contractor, right? We're an emerging industry. There's a lot of players that are coming to the table. Uh, this happened in, during the NDP era. There was uh, residential and commercial uh, incentives. Some of those went away. We're seeing it come, come back again. This is an example from the US. So Pink Energy was a big player in the US. They've since gone into bankruptcy. They've let a, left a lot of people stranded. They've taken money. Uh, unfortunately, they did lease. So they still owe for the system, but they've got nothing in return or they've got a system that doesn't work. The barrier to entry into, into solar is really low. Anyone with an electrical you know, master's license can pull a permit, call themselves a solar contractor. That doesn't make them a solar contractor. Uh, so barrier to entry is low. Barrier to exit is even lower. If you don't value your customers in terms of long-term warranty coverage, et cetera. That's a liability on our balance sheet. You can offer a system at a lower cost. So do your due diligence, right? Make sure you're not dealing with someone that's gonna be a fly-by-night. They're gonna be here today, gone tomorrow, chasing incentives. There's incentives federally right now. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, yeah, and just more of it. So it's, it, you know, we're seeing a lot of door knocking now. So people going around neighborhoods, knocking on doors, uh, you know, with a tablet, they sound like they might know a little bit, and that's really all they've been trained to know is, you know, how to get that conversion, how to get the commission. I'm not saying you need to deal with us. Make sure you're vetting your contractor though, right? That they've got tenure. They're going to be around for the long term. They're giving you quality data. A lot of people use off-the-shelf software. doesn't account for Calgary, Edmonton conditions where we've got snow coverage. Uh, so it's basing on kind of more U.S. off-the-shelf data. Next slide, please. The payback, this is the first question that I hear at any trade show, what's the payback on my system? The easy answer is it depends. Uh, next slide. <laughs> yeah, sorry, why do you keep your cross ball? It's, it really, it's so dependent. And again, it's dealing with a contractor that's being reasonable in how they evaluate, right? The kilowatt hours per kilowatt. I can tell you it's 1100 kilowatt hours per kilowatt. Someone else will tell you the same exact system orientation azimuth product is going to produce 1150 or 1200. 
Thank you. Um, and, and so you need to be able to question them. Where is that data coming from, right? Is it just off the shelf software or are you basing it on real world data? So we've got 3000 systems installed. We look at that, we use uh, NRCAN data. Really important, just ask the right questions. You know, again, it's uh, longevity means something. It's not to say that new entrants can't provide good value, but just ask the right questions. Next slide. So rather than payback, you know, I'd love to be able to educate everyone on LCOE, levelized cost of electricity, because this is actually what is meaningful in Alberta. Levelized cost of electricity is what we compare to what's the cost from the grid. So again, the, the grid cost, you know, if you're paying five year rate plans for Manmax right now, I think are about 9.29 cents. So if you're gonna lock into a five year plan, you're paying that plus the cost of transmission and distribution. What we're gonna be able to present to you is a, a levelized cost. So what's the hedge cost to invest in solar? And the hedge cost is probably somewhere between six and 10 cents now. The you know, cost of escalated for sure. We're probably somewhere in that six to 10, especially after a $5,000 rebate. So it, look, it starts to look good, right? You know, when you're at, at 9.29 cents uh, ver or on your retail cost, plus another six and a half cents to NMAX for, for transmission and distribution. Next slide. And yeah, so again, this, this transparency in, in what's in a kilowatt hour, what's in a kilowatt, uh, you know, if I could impart one thing on you, it's, it's really understand that, you know, what's a watt, what's a kilowatt, what's a kilowatt hour. Most people don't have that kind of understanding about electricity. So, you know, if you're comparing apples and apples, you really need to be able to ask these questions. So if someone's saying their six and a half kilowatt system will produce 75 kilowatt, 7,500 kilowatt hours in a year. And another one said, another six and a half kilowatt system says they're going to produce 7,000. Just ask those questions, right? Be, be knowledgeable. Um, this is the kind of, of, of information we're going to present to you. We're going to present kind of monthly uh, data. You know, this is assuming every month is the same. That's not the case. Uh, but, you know, reduction in bills. Next slide, please. So this is one I would be cautious of, right? Someone who's showing you a payback, you know, a defined six or seven year payback. They're suggesting they have a, a crystal ball. Um, they're suggesting that they know what's gonna happen in, in the marketplace. There's so many variables out there, a lot of solar, a lot of wind coming onto the, to the grid that should suppress pricing. But there's also you know, the $170 a ton coming in. Uh, so every year the price is gonna go up. And we honestly don't know what's gonna happen with natural gas. And so, you know, be able to evaluate LCOE, less so on the payback. Focus on, you know, can I manage this hedge cost? Next slide, please. I would also suggest that any, you know, contractor that's uh, here for the long term has made some investments. So it's so easy not to, not to say anything bad about Solar Alberta. They're, they're a good organization, but there's, again, there's very low barrier to entry. When you're getting involved with, you know, can, CANREA, Can Canadian Renew Renewables Energy Association, uh, or any of these others, right? There's, there's an actual hard cost. So, you know, look for something like that. You know, we've, we've, we've gone through a lot of these, uh, but it, it really just speaks to a tenure versus someone that's really just, you know, around for the short term. Next slide. I don't, sorry, keep going on that one. I, this is this is one of my favorite houses. This is a Bridgeline house. Uh, it's got a, a battery storage system as well, but just really simple standing seam metal. I love because we're connecting to the standing seams. No penetrations into the roof. We're at 30 seconds, and I'm just about done. Perfect. Thank you. Next slide. That's it. And so, you know, Richard, my colleague, is in the back. We're going to be out uh, front. If you have any questions, we're happy to talk to you as well.